The Crypto Markets Update is presented by Grayscale, the world's largest digital currency asset manager. Time for our live look at Bitcoin. The Coinbase Bitcoin Price XVX Index is trading over that $51,000 threshold, now just down about 36 basis points over the past 24 hours, and the Coindesk Ether Price ETX index is trading at 37.70, now down about 3.4% of the day. And the new DFX, Coindesk's DeFi index, is also trading slightly up 667, though over the past 24 hours still down about 6.8 percent and joining us now to discuss the crypto markets is stephen mcclurk chief investment officer and co-founder at bitcoin investment management group valkyrie welcome to the show stephen so taking a look at bitcoin and price amid this el salvador historic moment the bitcoin law is going into effect what's your interpretation of what is happening in the crypto markets how people are playing the news yeah, thanks for having me. Um, well, there's a lot of people in the community that are supporting this adoption by El Salvador. So we're all purchasing Bitcoin today. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we, we had a nice little dip today in Bitcoin. So it was a good time for Valkyrie to add about 30 more Bitcoin to its balance sheet. Uh, so uh, we did that this morning. And, um, and then myself personally, along with uh, several other people in the Bitcoin community are also uh, purchasing uh, uh, Bitcoin for ourselves and giving $30 gifts, $30 worth of Bitcoin as gifts to friends, family, and others. Uh, so that's been a lot of fun doing that this morning. Well, indeed, we we saw Bitcoin rise in price, uh, you know, the, the day before. Today, it's pulling back. People are traders taking profits, potentially. Um, I wonder, with the effect of uh, people returning from the summer holidays, what kind of impact we'll see, uh, you know, as traders get back to the desk? What, what's your outlook in the next three months of Bitcoin? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, the, the summer has been a great time for people to go out on vacation and go to other places, go on holiday. And uh, that is typical in financial markets for summers to be a little bit uh, lower volume, um, a little bit boring. Uh, but usually after Labor Day is when people get back into their desk and start trading again and you see, see higher volumes and in a lot of cases and things like hard assets and equities and other types of, of, of assets of that sort, higher prices. So, uh, so, so we believe they, that uh, we're going to see a lot of movement into Bitcoin and potentially other uh, crypto assets as well uh, over the next three months, uh, probably through Christmas. Uh, so uh, we, we do expect to see uh, prices go up quite a bit as well as volume. And we see El Salvador being the first to adopt Bitcoin as legal tender. Do you think other countries will follow? Absolutely. Um, you know, my, my, myself as a former emerging market bond trader, um, we used to have to do all kinds of tricky uh, things to uh, get liabilities back into dollars. Uh, you know, we would we would trade emerging market bonds in local currencies, but then have to apply cross-currency swaps in order to get dollars in the door because we didn't necessarily trust a lot of currencies from other countries due to potential inflation or even hyperinflation. So what I expect to see is many other countries following El Salvador adopting Bitcoin. I would much rather own Bitcoin and, and get Bitcoin as payment than, than many other emerging market currencies. Do you see any headwinds for Bitcoin? Um, of course, you know, I mean, the one thing that you always have to look out for technology is better technology. Uh, at the moment, Bitcoin is the best technology out there as far as a payment system. Um, uh, you know, and the, the two things that really drive that are, number one, uh, it's limited supply. And number two, it's uh, inability to hack. So um, that's really where a lot of the other ones fail. So, uh, so right now, Bitcoin is leading. So you, you always have to look out for, you know, for other innovations that may come up that, uh, you know, that, that could change that. Um, but the other thing too is it's it's become very commonplace. Um, I mean, I've used it personally to buy things like uh, art or, uh, or 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 pay people like I would pay them uh, back in Venmo. Uh, and, and really, vice versa. but I mean that that's arguable because a lot of people find it it is not the greatest payments mechanism because it can be kind of slow, and uh, right now it's there's that argument that it's more of a store of value versus a, a payments option, and there are other coins um, 
right now we see Solana getting in, in volume but the, because they're potential Ethereum killer. So just switching slightly a bit, I, I wonder what is your view of other coins like Solana coming into the fray? Yeah, so I'm actually a big fan of uh, coins like Solano and uh, Polkadot. Um, Algorand is another big one, but they have to be categorized a little bit differently than Bitcoin. And the main reason why is they don't have a limited supply. Uh, in order for something to really be a, be a strong hard currency is the limited supply. And that's why gold has been um, not only a store of value, but also a medium of exchange uh, for centuries. Um, Solano, Polkadot, Algorand, uh, what's great about all of those is it's, it's, a, it's a completely different reason. Those are protocols that you use the, co the token as, as, as gas or payment on that protocol. And even though these protocols are extremely fast, they support NFTs, which are really hot right now, uh, they support video games, uh, uh, video game usage. Those are all great instruments for that protocol, but as a as a payment mechanism for you know cross border cash, uh, you know electronic cash, uh, they're not really where Bitcoin is. See, so is there any hope for a Bitcoin ETF in the United States? What's the latest on that? <laughs> I wish I could comment on that. Uh, we have several applications on file, is all that I'll say. But uh, uh, we really hope that something's coming soon. You know, there was some comment from SEC Chair Gary Gensler that potentially some futures, uh, Bitcoin futures involved in the ETFs might be looked a little with a little more uh, positivity in passing. Has Valkyrie switched their game plan in ETFs to uh, sort of play to Gary Gensler's wishes, if you will? We, we, we have, so the, the three ETFs that we have on file related to Bitcoin is, you know, the first one obviously that we filed was a spot ETF. Uh, and then the second two are two different flavors of Bitcoin futures. Um, one was more of a, a hunch that we had that uh, the SEC might approve that first. And then uh, the second one was when, uh, was in response to Ginsburg's comments. Uh, so we, so we're definitely, you know, putting Covering our, your bases uh, for sure. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> So, and, and if not, if the United States, uh, you know, lags on this front, do you think investors will just go to other markets? Will novel innovations in finance proliferate in other countries, like in El Salvador, potentially? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's that's what I keep saying is every time I buy Bitcoin now, I'm, I'm actually buying El Salvadorian currency for the potential <laughs> that I might be visiting there. But, uh, but, but as far as financial innovations go, you know, look, uh, there, there are ETNs available in other countries and people are, are purchasing them. Um, you know, the Canadian ETFs are available in the U.S. Um, and uh, people are, you know, people are certainly uh, buying them uh, from U.S. <laughs> markets. So it's, it's kind of a shame that uh, we're allowing Canadian ETFs into our markets, but we can't allow, we're not allowing U.S. Uh, ETFs in our markets so we can actually regulate. 